the internet. Today we're going to discuss being prepared to make money. There are many of you out there who want to make money, but you're not prepared to make money. So I'm going to break it down. What do you need to do to get ready to make some money? Hey there, it's Glendon, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu University, where your real education begins. If you want to win a free t-shirt, this is what you do. You subscribe to the channel, you give me your phone number, and you comment on this video or any other video. What we do is the best comment of the day gets a free t-shirt. All the information is below the video. You got to go under that show me tab. Let's talk about preparation for money. There are many people who are ready to make money in the literal sense. I want to make some money, but they're not prepared. It's knowing who you're selling to, what about your product that they'll buy. Many people have no idea who their target audience is, so they're woefully unprepared to make money. Number two, capacity. Yes, you can leverage a lot of stuff on the internet. You build a website, gets hundreds of thousands of views for fractions of pennies for the scale. Here's a little secret. You got your website, you got your blog page, you got your Facebook page. Do you have the financial infrastructure or do you have the scaling infrastructure to make money? And what I mean is, I know SEO is wonderful and it's still alive, but you need to pay to play. So if you build this wonderful Facebook page and you don't know the organic reach tricks or pay to play, you're just not going to scale any of that. Content, or I should say the preponderance of content. One of the reasons that many people cannot scale or make money is their content profile is very, very thin. They do not have enough content to keep going until the money starts coming. That's a problem. And what it does is it holds many creators back. Now, I'm gonna teach you a few things that you need to do. Properly formatted, properly scaled, $20 a day can do a lot for your business. It's, if it won't convert at $20 a day, it's not gonna convert at a thousand bucks a day. But once you get your conversions dialed in, you can make money. A big part of scaling up when you don't have any money is not taking money out of the business. Let's take the Amazon flip up mode. For many of you, you would be reinvesting in product for about a year before you can get to the point where you like, okay, now we're good. Where many of you go wrong is once you get to 10,000 or maybe 15,000, you start pulling money out. That is way too early because cash to your business is like oxygen to your body. And because you're robbing some of that oxygen, I mean, you know, the business is still alive. <laughs> still percolating along where if you gave it all the cash it would just grow and grow and grow and that's virtually any business mac daddy media i have spent about seven hundred thousand dollars on this business this year what i'm doing is i'm building the foundation for it to grow into something much bigger once full disclosure i have four sources of income so for me to take all of the money that comes into mac daddy media and reinvest it in the business it's really not that big of a deal it's very important because let's talk about the offices. We have gone through no less than eight changes in the office. The second office, which was supposed to be a studio where in my podcast is set up, where I can have live guests in. Didn't really work out for that just yet. It will make a wonderful training room, but I rented that spot in February. It's the instruction, the infrastructure's there. Me used to paying the money for the rent. Me, it's all there. My plans for that spot, and this is something that you can take a lesson off because you ever, if you are trying to meet up with people and maybe if you start a meetup group or renting space for temporary hot, uh, parties or temporary get togethers, it's very expensive to rent a room at Rome for that's about, let's say to rent two rooms at Rome. I think they have a room my size. It would cost me about a hundred bucks an hour. My rent on one of those offices is a like 11.50. If I use my office just four times a month, I save money versus renting a space. Plus, I'm putting chairs, training chairs, so we're going to use it for a lot of events. But 
and I have 24 out hour access because that's something else too when you run the space. You can only have it for so long and you cannot have it overnight. If I want to do an overnight intensive, I'm not doing that, so calm down. I could, I have that freedom because I have an office. But once again, the infrastructure. The infrastructure and the capacity precede the actual money and often by months. Another reason that you're not prepared to make money is a lack of patience. Whenever, and I keep saying this, you're looking at two to five years before your business takes off or there's enough money to feed you and feed the business. And I say it, people are like, well, you know, Hustler 768 did it in three months. And many of you don't want to change your habits. So that's why you need the quick money come up. It comes quick, then you don't have to fix your bad behaviors, your bad habits, which you're blowing all your money, not saving, not having the budget, not knowing your net worth. You don't want to fix that. But if you join Hustlers Kung Fu University, you will fix that because the way that I'm gonna do it is if you don't fix it, you won't graduate. That's right, you won't graduate. You won't get that certificate of completion. No, you won't. Part of being prepared to make money is setting goals. It is putting in the work. Let's go back to the lack of patience. I understand that your mortgage is due, I understand your rent's due, I understand your car payment is late and you need money totally understand that but the problem that you don't understand is you got in that situation due to your bad habits and until you fix those bad habits you're still going to have those issues you'll just have more money to feed your dysfunction but mark my word once that money ro runs out or changes and money's always running out of changing unless you, you know it's a strange thing if you hold on to money it brings more money to you but if you blow all your money, money seems to run from you. It is a strange, strange thing. Another thing that happens with the lack of preparation is you are pres you're, you're susceptible to some type of scheme because you're desperate. You don't walk around desperate. You don't look desperate, but your actions dictate that you're desperate. So you're in a situation where you've got to really put out for a long time to get some traction and you're like my name is Leroy Johnson and I, I don't work for no delayed gratification man I don't do that mm -mm, not me I do work I get paid and as long as you've got that situation and that mindset you will always be a member of the working class now I'm a member of the creative class and I'm a member of the entrepreneur class I'm in two classes and this is really important because people are like, hey, I don't like to think about poor. I don't like to think about wealthy. You know, I just want to exist, live a good life, not bother anybody, have no one bother me. You can live that life. And if that makes you happy, go for it. But for those of you who want more, who want a better life, who want to leave your kids something, and we're going to talk about abundance very heavily in a second, that ain't going to work. That laissez-faire way of handling your life it's just not going to work the abundance theory is really really interesting i think in terms of abundance i do not think in terms of lack which can be challenging but i said to myself when i put together this you know creating video that makes you money i said to myself gee no one may not show up and my other self said you know what that could be the case but until we put it out there, we're not going to know. We're not going to know. We, we, we'll just be operating on the hypothetical. So I was like, okay, we're going to do it. Set a date, order the tables, got the chairs, got the curriculum of the course. We're ready. Just waiting for the date to come and the people to come. What I did was not step on one lever of faith. I stepped on six because now you know about the t-shirts. I was like, well, we'll make t-shirts for the course and eventually we're gonna come across a design so hot that people are like, I need that shirt, I gotta get that shirt. And that's gonna become another source of revenue. But with the abundance theory, it's hard to practice abundance theory when you're broke. Because everything that you don't have is very pronounced, it's very edgy, it's very harsh, it's real. You know, your rent, your mortgage is what, $1,500 a month and you got $1,350 and the last day for your mortgage or rent to be paid is tomorrow. 
that's some heavy stuff. That you're in that situation has nothing to do with the current world. It has nothing to do with your job. It has nothing to do with any of these bad things that you want to blame this on. It has everything to do with your bad habits. It has everything to do with your lack of ability to save money. Because I speak from that position because I was that guy. I was that guy that spent all my money. Couldn't hold on to it. And when things went south, I didn't have any reserves. I didn't have any extra. I had no nothing, no slack. It was just tight. And it was so tight. When things got tight, it broke. Bad things happened. Repossession. Bad credit. Homelessness. And I was like, man, I'm a good guy. I was doing the right thing. I was doing a lot of the right things, but I was still doing a lot of the wrong things. A bunch of the wrong things was not having a budget, not having savings, not working toward a business. I think I used to play entrepreneur. Once it got, I got real about being an entrepreneur, and I'm gonna tell you a funny story about that. Things started to happen. Now here's the funny story. I was really struggling in the office furniture business. I mean, I had a lot of money coming in, but none of that money was mine. Did 1.2 million, roughly 30, 40,000 of that was mine. And often I didn't get paid every month. My savings were eradicated. I was at my boy Mario's place. And I was like, you know, I went for an Orkin job. Went for the physical, passed the physical. The guy was like, well, yeah, we could do it. And he told me I had to shave this. Mario and I was just like, yeah, I think I got a job with Orkin. And Mario talked about me so bad, like, you gonna give up the entrepreneurial life to, to be a bug man? If you ain't bug man lifting, there ain't nothing wrong with the job. It's just it wasn't for me. And he just talked about me in such a condescending tone. And he was like, John, Glenn ain't gonna be over here spraying roaches. And it made me mad. I was like, what? what? So I called up the Orkin people and I said, nah, I can't take this job. And that was my moment. And I, I want to say a thank you to Mario because he, he set me straight because I almost tapped out because I wasn't doing the right things. It was hard. It was a struggle. Part of the pre preparation for money is to hang out and get to know people who are about on that money chase with you. Because let's say there was no Mario in the picture. I'd probably be working at Orkin. But since Mario was in the picture and I surrounded myself with other good people, he punked me on... You know the Orkin thing, and he told me, he said, "Man, I just had to, I had, I, I had to cut you, man, because you talk some crazy stuff. You, you doing all this stuff? You make ten thousand a month, and you talking about going to do Orkin? That's just crazy." And, and you know what? He was right. But in the moment, I was weak. I was very weak. I was weary because it was just getting harder and harder to go make those presentations, knowing that I wasn't going to make any money, even if I got the sale. And then another friend of mine, he was like, man, but you made money. So like, do you understand? A lot of times, most years, the first year, businesses are in the red. You should be glad. You should be happy. And I wasn't in the mindset to hear that. But he was right. Going back to the preparation of money. If you start a business, a side hustle, you can't touch that money. I know, I know this sounds strange coming from someone who is driving a very expensive vehicle, but I'll even tell you the story on that, which actually fits very nicely into this. I was out looking and looking, and I was trying to decide between what I was gonna get. And I just, a lot of stuff didn't appeal to me, but this, I kept coming back to this vehicle, kept coming back to this design. What I was doing since February was putting money in an account. Every month I would get money, I was like, slide it over here. And it was a business account and it was labeled an expense account so i was out there and i went online and it happened just like this you know that ad like car gurus how they they hit my facebook page i don't know if they hit yours and one just popped up i went in car gurus and i was like that's interesting because the pictures were kind of dark and they weren't really well taken so i got up the next morning went up there to check it out the car looked better in person. The mileage was really low. And I was like, I'm gonna do this. And I, I felt the excitement, because like, yeah, I can do it. Because I had more than enough money in the bank to pay cash for it. And the guy would sit there, he, he explained the financing plan. He said, hey, if you're a member of a credit union, you probably get your best deal there. And I, I waited for him. 
And then I hit him up like this. I said, would you take 4,000 off if I paid cash money today? And dude just kind of, for like 38 seconds, he just froze. He's like, what? <laughs> Cause you know, I went in, I, I had the hoodie on. I didn't, you know, I didn't even shave that day. <laughs> I completely blew him out of the water with that. And later on he told me that only two people had paid cash for these, a vehicle of this caliber since he's been selling cars, two. But the thing is, I prepared, going back to February, February, March, uh, May, June, July, August, September, October, and I pulled the trigger. And there's still money in there. If I wanted to get another vehicle, I could. And I'm not saying to brag or boast, I'm just saying that when you segment your money as you get it, you prepare yourself for better things in the future. Essentially, I'm telling you, I practice what I preach. I got five accounts. In one, well, actually, I have five accounts in this LLC, and I got another five accounts, which I'm not using because that's the holding company, in another LLC. So I practice what I preach. Now, to say this was a little extraordinary, but, but once again, I have high income, and once again, I used to be a person with very low income. Orkin. I went three months, didn't make any money. Three months. Then I went out and made the sale, and I made like $4,000, and I was happy. That was like the best $4,000 ever. Because I wasn't in a bad situation, but mentally, I was bankrupt. Emotionally, I was whipped, because I kept seeing my savings account going down, down. And then I made that sale, and I cleared four grand. Then I cleared some more money. And I made the decision to start selling you stuff because the profits were there. And that's how I got in the storage auction business. Preparation of money is your mindset. It's your budget. Because you can start a business with no money. You can. If your hustle is elegant enough, you can. If you're a person that you struggle to figure out what you need to do or you don't know what you want to do, you're not a person that's going to start a business without knowing any money. You're not. You just not. And I know that's harsh and you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. What you need to do, which is what I did to prepare to own the business. I worked for rent a crate and two furniture companies before I went out on my own. And that was about a two and a half year period. I got the intel, I got the knowledge, I got the industry connections. That's what you need to do. Not once have you heard Glendon Cameron tell you to quit your job. My rule of thumb is quit your job when your job is costing you money, whenever that may be. So to prepare to make money, you gotta make some mental moves. You gotta make some physical moves. You gotta make some financial moves. You got these videos where these chicks are like, hey, I saved $100,000 in three or four years. Think about it. In most businesses, I'm talking about Amazon, outside of a tech or an app, you can start for five to 20 grand, easy, and scale that business up to a million. Not so easy, but doable. And then once you hit a million, you can scale up to 10 million. That's just gonna be time and having the right proper systems and processes in together. It's just that doable. I'm not gonna say easy, because easy, that word's thrown around a lot. It's doable if you have the right DNA, if you have the right plan. Now at this moment, we're gonna depart and Broke Dick Danny, you can leave because we're about to do some pitching. Because I practice what I preach. I preach asking for the money up front, no games. And that's what we're about to do. Hey there, this is what's going on. I am getting ready to move and enhance some courses. Like Fat Cat Secrets, that's pretty new. I'm going to leave that the way it is. But all of these courses, well, some of them, I shouldn't say everything. But I'm going to move to the new platform. I like Teachable much better. It's just easier. It's cleaner than this one. Now, with the move there will be significant enhancements because I'm not going to download these and move them to the new platform. I am going to rebuild 
these courses. So 30 days to 2,500 is going to be 30 days to 5,000. Disruptive money personal is going to change. Becoming the boss is going to change. Uh, disruptive mating, I don't, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll enhance that. How going to be broke again? I'll enhance that. Um, so what's going to happen? Child support probably leave that alone because that's really good the way it is, but everything's going to go to.